Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to use the extension Kami. Some of you may already have it, and if you do, it would be up in your toolbar with all of your extensions. If not, you're going to need to go to the uh, Chrome Web Store and search for Kami. Click on the Kami extension. And then instead of saying remove from Kami because I already have it, you would have add to Chrome and then you would install the extension. Once you install it, it's going to pop up here in your toolbar. It may disappear. If that's the case, you're going to click on the puzzle piece to manage your extensions and just make sure that it is pinned. So right now I unpinned it. I pinned it again. When you pin it, it is saved in your toolbar. Um, you're not necessarily going to need it from here. What I'm recommending is that you're going to use it from your Google Classroom. So I'm gonna open up my Google Classroom and I'm going to use a test class that I've created. And I'm going to start by going to Classwork. In Classwork, I have the option to create. I'm going to create a Kami assignment. Now we have the option for a Kami assignment. Click on Kami assignment. And what's gonna happen is a window is gonna pop up, just kind of very similar to when you're creating a regular Google Classroom assignment. So you have all of the same types of options you would when you're creating assignment in Google Classroom. So I'm gonna create a title. You do not need to have instructions. These are optional. I'm just going to do complete exit worksheet. And then you have the option to grade it, to have a due date, to schedule the time, um, and if you want to have it under a topic that you've already created. Now, you have the option to send the instructions to the students. At this point, all the students should have Kami. If they do not, you can help them get the extension as well on their Chromebooks. This will be added to your assignment with instructions just so that they have them. So that is an option that you can add. Now, you are going to pull your PDF from either uh, your computer or your Google Drive. I have mine on my desktop right now, so I'm going to pull it from my computer, which is the paper clip. And you'll see that I have a fix it PDF document. I'm going to open that document and it's going to create a copy for each student. Okay, you do have the option to share one copy or to just share it and they are not able to edit it but this is for editing purposes. So you just wanna make sure that you have make a copy for each student. I could have also used um, my Google Drive. I'm just gonna show you that when you select use my drive, you have a new option here to pull from PDFs from your drive. So that is a nice option. All right, so I'm ready and I'm going to assign my Fix-It worksheet to my class. And now this is where we're going to be able to access the um, tools within Kami. So I'm gonna open it up in Classroom. And here is the assignment. And as you can see, here is my Fix-It PDF. And here are the directions. I'm gonna click on this just so you can see what that looks like. All right. So how to use Google Classroom with your Kami, um, and then it's gonna show you how the students can add the extension, just like I showed you. All right, so now let's open up our Fix-It document. All right, here it is. Unfortunately, you can't do anything here. What you need to do is you're gonna go to Open with Kami. All right. And now this might pop up, it's not necessarily going to pop up all the time, but you would like to run OCR just so that you can get the benefits of everything that Kami has.
if it asks you that. All right, so it's kind of just making sure that it's formatted correctly so that we can do all of the things that we need to do. All right, on the side here, this is our toolbar that we're going to use to edit. So the main thing that you're gonna to wanna to use is the text box option. So as a student, I need to click on the text box option. I can change the size of the font here if I want. I can also change the color. I can customize the color if I need to as well. So once I'm ready to actually create a text box, I just click where I want and it gives me a text box. You're gonna have to expand it, but it also gives you um, a similar word toolbar up at the top so you can do all of these different things that you need to do. So I'm gonna actually just put in my name, okay? And that's done. If I'm ready to move on, I can just click on the next spot to add my next text box. And I'm going to make my changes. Making sure that I put in all my um, you know, make all my corrections. Now, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go up here and just make sure that it is a little bit larger. Now, one of the other tools that's really great is that we have our drawing tool. Now, this can come in handy for a lot of reasons. You also have the option to pick the size, uh, the thinness or thickness of the brush stroke. You also have the transparency option and then you have other color options. Now, I know that this would be in, come in handy if you wanted students to underline, you know, evidence in a text or, um, you know, underline subject or verb or, you know, nouns, things like that. So I'm just going to select the pink. And then let's say you wanted me to underline the mistakes here as a student. So I'm going to underline that these are not capitalized, and then I'm going to put a period there. Okay, so you have the option of using a drawing tool. All right, the drawing tool, you can also circle mistakes. So if you want them to circle the mistake, all right, um, that their capitalization is incorrect and that there's no punctuation. Um, the other tool is the markup tool, which you have the option to use a highlighter. Okay, if you want students to go back in and highlight important things within a text. So maybe you want them to make sure that they begin each sentence with a capital letter and that they use punctuation. Okay, so as you highlight, as you drag your mouse across, it highlights for you. All right, you also have these other options. You can underline, strike through, or box highlight. So here's the box highlight. So if I was to do this, I would drag over and highlight. If you don't want to do that, you have the undo option at the top. Okay, so those three, I think, are the most important ones um, for now. You also have um, the eraser. If you want to erase, some of the things that you've done, if you go to all annotations, you can go back and just hover over your mistakes that you've, you've made and just make sure that when you're done, you go back to another tool. You also have the option to add photos, uh, videos um, as a student, as a teacher. Um, these are all things that you can do as well. Another cool feature that is in here is the option for text to speech for students that may need that. Um, if I highlight, they are going to the farm. It will read it for the students. They are very excited. Okay. If I want them to repeat it, I, I or if I want them to read the page, read fix it directions. 
Rewrite each sentence correctly and write it. Begin each sentence with a capital letter and add punctuation. The field trip I'll file file send one Ben and Mel are... Okay, now I can also change the type of voice there is to a girl if I prefer. Read fix it directions. Right. Okay, you also have a comment option, which gives you the option to highlight something that you might the student might have a question about. So if I wanted to ha ask a question, I could highlight that and then ask my question on the side here. I could also do a voice comment and it would pop up here. It's gonna start recording. It's asking me to allow my microphone. I have a question about number three. I have a question about number three. And as a teacher, you can respond to that comment. Okay, you also have the option to use dictionary. The dictionary, if you need to, um, if you're not sure of a word, you can highlight the word and the dictionary allows you to get the actual definition of the word. Okay, and down here, like if I wanted to, I could go back to my drawing tool. I could check mark that I used all my capital letters. I could make it a little bit thicker just so I could see it a little better. I used spaces, I used punctuation. Okay, now I'm done. So as a student, what happens, there's a, an option to turn it in. Okay, and you'll see it also says saved here. It saves as you go. So you don't have to worry about saving it. Um, but as a student, I will have a button here that says turn in and the students can turn it in as they would a regular uh, classroom assignment. And you'll also see that up here, it's showing that it's saved in my Google Drive. So as the teacher, you're going to have a Kami Assignments Google Drive folder and you will also have your classroom folder that saves all of the students turned in work as well. So we're just gonna go back to my classroom just so you could see what I'm talking about. So we're gonna go to student work, okay? And you'll see here's my students' assignments. And if they had turned them in, it would show up here, okay? Then if I wanted to go to my drive, You will see in my drive that I have a folder for Kami assignments, okay? So now inside my Kami assignments are all of my, the assignments that I created for my students, all right? And then, whoops, if I go back to my drive, I would go into my classroom folder, go into my test class, and then go into my test Kami assignment. And here are my students' um, copies of their work. And they have not started it yet, but once they started it and turned it in, I would have their finished assignment here as well. Okay, so I hope that helps. The other thing that you can do is you can start by going straight to Kami up in your extension and you can open from your drive, you can open from your computer, or you could create your classroom assignment right from there instead of going to Google Classroom. It's the same process. I hope this helps and I hope you find this very helpful when teaching remotely or even in your classrooms. Please reach out if you have any questions.